it's John Stewart here, Alamo City Cello. Want to show you my uh, my outdoor rig. This is amplified cello. Well, really, it's not so much amplification as it is EQing the cello. That's more or less treble, more or less mace, more or less bass. And through subtle changes in the sound, we can add to the cello and create a more pleasant acoustic sound. So really, philosophy of use, I'm really going for an acoustic sound. So we'll start off with just the natural sound of the cello. This is with no amplification, just through a microphone and as is. <laughs> When I first got it started amplifying the cello, um, I was really going for power. I wanted the most. This was my philosophy philosophy of use. I wanted the most power that I could get in the back seat of my car. So if whatever the size amp, if it was a Marshall amp and I could just squeeze it in the car, then great. And I went with the Roland amp and uh, it was great. I mean, it had a nice tone and everything, but I found myself not using all that power. I didn't need 300 watts. I wasn't playing with bass and drum and the venues that I'm playing are much more intimate than that. Uh, and actually, when I really started to think about it, I thought five watts could make the difference. Uh, and so I want to show you my mobile rig. This is, this is very exciting. This is very exciting because it, it can take the cello that you already have and it can give it so many more variables. So I'm really excited to show this to you. We'll start with the cello. This is a rather inexpensive instrument made by Cecilio and I got it from a student, not for a lot of money. I think you can pick these cellos up for about 300 bucks on the internet. Now, the verdict is still out because I've been having some intonation problems with this thing and I'm not sure it really holds tune, but so far so good on the tone production. This cello has been outfitted by me with a quarter inch jack and inside is a piazzo pickup on the back plate of the cello. And you can see right here, oops, <coughs> turn, mute this, but you can see there's like a quarter inch jack through a hole and that's where you plug into. And, and folks, this seems like the most logical place, the most logical place for a hole, if you're gonna drill a hole into the cello, because there's a block of wood back there, and when I first drilled a hole in the cello, unfortunately, I put it in the slot in the rib here, and that's a no-no, because it just, it started cracking, and it was just, there's stability problems. You know, this wood is very thin. The, the back plate of the cello, the but there's a block, there's an in pin block, and it's about so thick. And I placed this and so whoops, this inside of it. This is something I just rigged up today. This is what's called a quarter inch jack, a quarter inch in pin jack. And um, uh, K and K makes some great ones. I've heard uh, Ma uh, McIntyre here also makes good pickups. And this I rigged up myself. I I I, I weaved this together. And these are the three little muses, or the three little pigs. And, uh, or some people call them piazzo pickups. So here we go, there's three of them. And I have found that the placement of the pickup that's most natural to my ear is on the back plate. Now you don't get a ton of gain on this. You don't get, you know, if you're not, bass and drums, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna start to, it's gonna start to squeal at high volumes. But at low volumes, it, it has, there's, there's something to the low volume end of it. So let's give this a listen. And we're going to change a few of the factors in it. And, I can, and, and I'd like to show you um, how you can EQ your sound in various ways. So we'll unmute this and then we'll bring up what Bags calls presence. So here's with a little bit more presence in the sound. That might be overall just a little too loud. We'll bring the volume down. It's also very, very bright. Let's bring this down. Let's bring the brightness down. I'm going to bring the treble down on this. What about a little bit more treble? 
variables. Variables in the octave. That's what you really want, isn't it? to the sound of the cello. Um, it's better than my normal acoustic sound. And the reason that I say that it's better is that it gives you more options. And the options that exist are unintrusive on your natural sound of your cello. By, okay, some, 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 I, some, some, some conclusions that I've come to as far as the cello sound. The cello sound is really the top plate of the cello. So nothing, nothing is can touch the top plate. Nothing, that's like, that's the cello sound, is that top plate. So nothing, at first I was putting pickups, you know, like underneath the bridge and, 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 and they were wrapped up here. This is meant to freely vibrate and, and, and anything that connects to there is gonna deaden the sound, especially on the low end. So I don't, I didn't want that. The back plate is the least obtrusive. By having one small pickup on the back plate, Okay, so that's not going to, I know that's not going to affect my acoustic sound. And knock on wood, it's not going to rattle either, which is the other thing. We don't want this to rattle. But I wanted a permanent installation because, look, you could go buy a little pickup, a cherub or whatever, and cut the ends off. And take some, uh, some, some tack, some, what do they call it, like a poster tack. And you can place that on, on the back plate. And it'll hold, but the problem is it won't hold. The problem is, is when you're playing and you're really getting into it, it falls off, right? So you end up putting it then on the top plate and okay, you get a little bit more, it's, it's not bad, but it's also not ideal because you're getting a lot of the surface sounds. You're hearing a lot of shh in the, this, this too. And anything that touches the top plate can't be good because it's, it's inhibiting in some way. That's, that's the, the an area that for me is really acoustic. So um, these are just like ideas Go check out Jason Vitetti's website, The Pickup Test. Really an amazing resource. And what a genius idea where you're able to compare various pickups. I like K and K. I think they do good stuff. Um, I, ha I don't have a lot of experience with, with I, I usually like roll my own, I brew my own, I make like I made this here. And you know, I have soldering skills, so I was able to do this. Oh, one little word on these in pin jacks so pay attention here folks you want to get one that you're really able to take all this extra stuff off and just be left with the threaded shaft you're gonna need all of this threading I hear this is an American company that makes this I'm the name escapes me right now but it's an end pin jack because the, the block on a cello is thicker than it is on a on a on a on a guitar, and so we're retrofitting this. This is we're we're re, you know we're reusing this for cello. It is just long enough to get a grip, and you want that to be in there solid. So when I put this in here, you drill you 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 drill a quarter inch hole, right? Which is scary, right? Actually, I used a reamer to do this over my friend my fr uh, friend Miss Entry's house, and it's solid in there. I mean. But there's like two sets of screws and you gotta, you gotta clamp down on them. And so um, I was able to install it using fishing line, uh, a clothes hanger, and a straw. And the straw was genius because I wanted to be able to put glue on the back plate just in one specific area. And I was thinking like, how am I gonna do that? A syringe or, and my buddy Fred Messenger said, just use a straw, suck a little bit in and then blow it out. And so we had a good time making jokes about that. And it worked, dude, it worked, it was great. So um, definitely, um, you know, it, it's doable. And so if I can do it, you can do it, that's what I'm saying. The back plate about right, right here, one. Now, if you want more volumes, it might be a good idea to shield this stuff somewhat. And I've heard that like copper f uh, filament or copper, or what do they call that, foil, you can shield it, which maybe gives you a few more decimal levels of power. But I've come to the conclusion for me that power is an illusion. 
and that I just want to use just enough to be heard because I want to draw them in anyway, you know. So that's my thing. Everyone's got their thing. And playing with bass and drums, you're going to need something more aggressive. You're going to need something that gets this, gets closer to the string. So, I mean, a realist, yeah, sure. I got a realist over here. Check this out, guys. I'll, I'll, and I've got a split here in a couple, but I have a realist, and I, and I spray painted it brown. So you don't even really notice it. But here's my problem with the realist, guys, is that it, atta it attaches to the tail piece. It attaches to the tail piece. I, I, I don't, you know, look. If you want to get ultimate volume, if you really want to do bass and drums, go buy yourself a realist. I've got one too. If I, if I ever need to play loud, loud, there you go, baby. That's what you need. You're going to need something close to the string. You know, maybe like a, what are they called? Electromagnetic pickups. I've been hearing things about them. A buddy of mine's got one on a, on a Gibson hollow, hollow body, and it sounds divine. I mean, Wes Montgomery played on that pickup, so, I mean, you know. For pizzicato, that might be a real option. EQing, it seems to be a, an interesting task, a very exciting field. We're really taking the cello in places it hasn't been before, and it's about time. Because, you know, the pianist, I mean, look at that. Look at that bohemness that's come up out of the piano. It started off as just like a small little, you know, now it's like, you know, the, the Burzendorfer, you know, it's, it's, it looks like a great white shark, and it sounds about as loud. Well, how loud are great whites? Or, or do they, do they talk? We just don't hear them. Anyways, I'm getting kind of off topic right now. Um, getting back to the equipment, I, I think this can be very useful. can be very useful for, for uh, cellists that are wanting to play outside. Uh, for cellists that want to play with piano, for example, maybe a concerto, where you need just a little bit more power. Five watts is about right. All right, guys, take care.